want to give you a quick update on where we are with the Genome Project. Many of you remember me from the University of Georgia. I retired a year ago and took on this role as Executive Director of the Peanut Foundation. If you're not familiar with the Foundation, we're the research funding arm of the American Peanut Council. We take money, donations from the peanut industry, and we fund research that is beneficial to the entire industry. So, um, the last few years, the Foundation has been fully committed into funding genomic research. I want, to, I want you to think about why we're doing that. Is it a scientific curiosity or is it a path to a better peanut? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of both. There's some basic research that has to be done, which is really fascinating. We're discovering amazing things um, about what makes a peanut plant tick. But also, we're learning how to build a better peanut, and that is the ultimate goal of where we're going. What is a genome, anyway? And I can, I can talk in layman's terms because I am one. The, the scientists that we fund uh, can get up here and talk about a lot of really deep things that may put us all to sleep, but I, I think I can talk uh, on your level because I am certainly on your level as far as genome uh, science. But a genome is an organism's complete set of DNA, all the information needed to build and maintain that organism, okay? It's the genetic code of that organism. I got a genome, you got a genome, all God's children's got a genome, okay? We, we all have our own set of DNA. And what we're trying to figure out here is what does the G DNA look like of a peanut plant? What makes it a peanut plant? What do you do with a genome when you got one? Okay, we're pretty close to having one. We have successfully sequenced the genome of the two progenitor species, the two wild species that came together thousands of years ago and created what is now modern day peanut. We know the sequence of those two wild species now and that is about to be published any day now in Nature Genetics, a very prestigious journal. So that is one significant accomplishment that uh, this project has made. Now the next step is to try to figure out this cultivated peanut that we all know and grow, what does the DNA look like of that? It's very similar to those two progenitor types, but it's unique too, and we're very close to having that. Um, what we want to do with this is, is build a better peanut. That's basically the goal. We want to take all the gene, once we have this map and we know all the code, then we got to figure out what does that code mean? All right, it's got all these genes in here, but we got to figure out where those genes are, what they do, and, and some of these traits that we're trying to get to may be controlled by multiple genes. There may be all kind of complex combinations of genes uh, that are resulting in the final trait that we're looking for. So we got to figure out, once we have the code, what it means and how do we use it. Uh, it's very complicated and I'm not going to get too deep here, but peanut is a tetrapoid. That means it's got two sets of, of chromosomes. It's got over two billion base pairs. That means the genetic code, the little uh, actual chemical part of that DNA, has two billion sequences, or a sequence of two billion codes in there. So that's a lot. We gotta figure out where all that is. It's equivalent to the number of characters in nine Bibles. So if you can kind of visually picture that, that's a lot of genetic code to figure out. So we're trying to do that, and another uh, analogy is if you had two big dictionaries, one a Webster's Dictionary and one some other kind of dictionary, and you chopped it up into whole little pieces, which they do when they sequence these things, then the next step is to put it all back together in the right order, and in this case, with a tetrapoid like peanut, figure out which dictionary it goes into. So it's in the right sentence, but it goes in this dictionary or that dictionary. So it is a complicated process, and that's where we are right now with the Genome Project on cultivated peanut. We've got all the pieces, now we gotta put it all together in the right order and figure out what goes where. What is the perfect peanut? And you may see some of these traits up here, there's a lot more, but you may have your favorite. As a grower, you may say, well, I really want yield, I really want disease resistance to cut my cost, 
Uh, Scheller may say, I want the perfect seed size, I want the right oil chemistry, I want the seed shape. Uh, all of these things are traits that different part of the industry has value in. So we're, there is no perfect peanut, and, and we're not saying that there'll be one peanut that comes out of this and that's what everybody will grow. There'll be multiple types of peanuts and they'll all have those traits that we desire, different parts of the industry desire. The U.S. peanut industry has committed six million dollars to this project to map this genome. And that's coming from grower organizations, shell organizations, and manufacturers equally contributing to this. So it's really a perfect marriage of the entire industry, which, let's face it, doesn't always get along all the time. We may have different opinions about things, but everybody is agreeing to come together and fund this project because we see benefit for everybody across the industry. We have an annual report. I'm not going to get too deep in this, but if you ever want to read about what's going on with the project, there's an annual report that comes out every year, and this is a copy of the last one. Uh, it gets pretty technical, but the beginning of that report has a layman's terms explanation of where we are. So it, it really does boil it down into to good reading uh, where um, you can understand what's going on even if you don't have a degree in genetics. The goals of the research is to identify and use beneficial genes. Those that we already have in cultivated peanut and those that may be in wild species. There's some really, de really desirable traits that are in wild species of peanuts that we would love to be able to use and we're just beginning to learn how to do that and, and utilize some of those genes. Uh, like Corley said, we want to facilitate marker assisted breeding and this is not GMO, okay? When you hear the word genome, people think GMO technology. This is not GMO technology. It's marker assisted. And like Corley said, we're not opposed to GMO. And in the future, there may be some great opportunities for GMO. But the consumer is probably not quite ready for a GMO peanut. And our efforts are right now are going into marker assisted breeding. We want to make a better peanut. And uh, that's the ultimate bottom line. Next, once we have this map and we got all this genetic code, then we got to figure out what does that mean in the field? What does it look like? And that means matching uh, that genetic code with the phenotype or the actual expression of that gene in the field. So there's a lot of work going on with that right now. Both of them have to be done so that when we have these markers and we can identify, yes, this this particular line, breeding line, has this trait, then we can match that and we know what we're gonna have when we plant that seed in the field. Uh, I'll leave it with that. Just wanted to let you know uh, briefly what we're up to and appreciate the support of all of the different organizations that contribute to this project.